tampering them. Witness tampering is a felony punishable by 20 years in prison. You found evidence that the president engaged in efforts, and I quote, to encourage witnesses not to cooperate with the investigation. Is that right? That's correct. Do you have a citation? That I'm page seven on volume two. Thank you. Now, one of these witnesses was Michael Cohen, the president's personal lawyer who ultimately pled guilty to campaign violations based on secret hush money payments to uh, two women the president knew, and also to lying, Congress, lying to Congress about the hope for $1 billion Trump Tower deal. After the FBI searched Cohen's home, the president called him up personally, he said, to check in and told him to, quote, hang in there and stay strong. Is that right? Do you remember finding that? If it's in the report as, as stated, yes, it is right. Yes, also in the report actually are a series of calls made by other friends of the president. Uh, one reached out to say he was with the boss in Mar-a-Lago and the president said he loves you. His name is redacted. Another redacted friend called to say the boss loves you and a third redacted friend called to say everyone knows the boss has your back. Do you remember finding that sequence of calls? Generally, yes. When the news, um, and, and in fact, Cohen said that following the receipt of these messages, I'm quoting here, uh, page 147 of volume two, he believed he had the support of the White House if he continued to toe the party line, and he determined to stay on message and be part of the team. That's at page 147. Do you remember generally finding generally, that? Generally, yes. Well, um, and uh, Robert, uh, Costello, a lawyer close to the president's legal team, uh, emailed Cohen to say, quote, you are loved, they are in our corner, sleep well tonight, and you have friends in high places. And that's up on the screen, page 147. You remember reporting that. that. Okay. Now, when the news first broke that Cohen had arranged payoffs to Stormy Daniels, uh, Cohen faithfully stuck to this party line. He said that publicly that neither the Trump organization nor the Trump campaign was a party to the transaction and neither reimbursed him. Um, Trump's personal attorney at that point quickly uh, texted Cohen to say, quote, client says thank you for what you do. Um, Mr. Mueller, who is the capital C client thanking Cohen for what he does? I can't speak to that. Uh, okay, the, the assumption in the context suggests very strongly it's President Trump. I can't speak to that. Okay. Cohen later broke and pled guilty to campaign finance offenses and admitted fully they were made, quote, at the direction of candidate Trump. Do you remember that? Yes. After Cohen's guilty plea, the president suddenly changed his tune towards Mr. Cohen, didn't he? Uh, I would say uh, I rely on what's in the report. Well, he made the suggestion that Cohen family members had committed crimes. He targeted, for example, Cohen's father-in-law and repeatedly suggested that he was guilty of committing crimes, right? I generally accurate. Okay. On page 154, you give a powerful summary of these changing dynamics. And you said, I'm happy to have you read it, but I'm happy to do it if not. I have in front of me, thank you. Would you like to read it? I would. Can you read it out loud to everybody? I would be happy to have you read it out. Okay, very, very, we'll read it at the same time. The evidence concerning this sequence of events could support an inference that the president used inducements in the form of positive messages in an effort to get Cohen not to cooperate and then turn to attacks and intimidation to deter the provision of information or to undermine Cohen's credibility once Cohen began cooperating. I believe that's accurate. Okay, and in my view, if anyone else in America engaged in these actions, they would have been charged with witness tampering. We must enforce the principle in Congress that you emphasize so well in the very last sentence of your report, which is that in America, no person is so high as to be above the law. I yield back, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just recently, Mr. Mueller, you said uh, Mr. Liu was asking you questions. And Mr. Liu's question, I, I quote, the reason you didn't indict the president is because of the OLC opinion. And you answered, that is correct. But that is not what you said in the report, and it's not what you told Attorney General Barr. And in fact, in a joint statement that you released with DOJ on May 29th, after your press conference, you're offered, your office issued a joint statement with the Department of Justice that said, the Attorney General has previously stated that the Special Counsel repeatedly 
affirmed that he was not saying that but for the OLC opinion, he would have found the president obstructed justice. The special counsel's report in his statement today made clear that the office concluded it would not reach a determination one way or the other whether the president committed a crime. There is no conflict between these statements. So Mr. Miller, do you stand by your joint statement with DOJ that you issued on May 29th as you sit here today? Uh, I would have to look at it more closely before I said uh, uh, I agree with it. Well, um, so, I, you know, my conclusion is that what you told Mr. Liu really contradicts what you said in the report, and specifically what you said apparently repeatedly to Attorney General Barr, that, and then you issued a joint statement on May 29th saying that the Attorney General has previously stated that the special counsel repeatedly affirmed that he was not saying but for the OLC report that we would have found the president of obstructed justice. So I just say there's a conflict. I do have some more questions. Mr. Mueller, there's been a lot of talk today about firing the special counsel and curtailing the investigation. Were you ever fired, Mr. Mueller, from Was the special? I what? Were you ever fired as special counsel, Mr. Mueller? Not that I, no. No. Were you, were you allowed to complete your investigation unencumbered? Yes. And in fact, you resigned as special counsel when you closed up the office in, in late May 20, 2019, is that correct? That's correct. Thank you. Um, Mr. Mueller, on April 18th, the Attorney General had all, held a press conference in conjunction with the public release of your report. Did Attorney General Barr say anything inaccurate, either in his press conference or his March 24th letter to Congress, summarizing the principal conclusions of your report? Well, uh, what you are not mentioning is a letter we sent on uh, March 27th uh, to Mr. Barr that raised uh, uh, some issues. And that letter speaks for itself. But then I, I don't see how you could, could, that could be since A.G. Barr's letter detailed the principal conclusions of your report and you have said before that, that there wasn't anything in, inaccurate. In fact, you had this joint statement. But let me, let me go on to another uh, question. Uh, Mr. Mueller, rather than purely relying on the evidence provided by witnesses and documents, I, I think you relied a lot on media. I'd like to know how many times you cited the Washington Post in your report. How many times I what? Cited the Washington Post in your report. I, don't have, I, I do not have knowledge of that yeah. uh, figure, but I, I, well, that's I, it. I don't have knowledge of that figure. I counted about 60 times. How many times did you cite the New York Times? I counted. Uh, again, I have. No idea. I counted about 75 times. How many times did you cite Fox News? I, as with the other two, I have no idea. I, about 25 times. I, I've got to say, it looks like volume two is mostly regurgitated press stories. Honestly, there's almost nothing in volume two that I couldn't already hear or know simply by having a $50 cable news subscription. However, your investigation cost the American taxpayers $25 million. Um, Mr. Mueller, you cited media reports nearly 200 times in your report. Then in a footnote, a small footnote, number seven, page 15 of volume two of your report, you wrote, I quote, this section summarizes and cites various news stories, not for the truth of the information contained in the stories, but rather to place candidate Trump's response to those stories in context. Since nobody but lawyers reads footnotes, are you concerned that the American public took the embedded news stories? Time of the gentlelady has expired. The gentlelady from Washington. Can, can Mr. Mueller? 